Hey everyone, it's Todd the Cybertruck Truck Guy, and today we're coming at you from beautiful fall in the Midwest. So I'm just here at a park. If you hear kids playing outside, you know, it is what it is. I got the windows rolled down, so we're just enjoying the fall. So today I want to talk about why making electric pickup trucks is so hard. In the last couple of weeks, there have been a number of stories slash viral videos about each of the trucks that are currently in production. So there's been a couple of videos on the F-150 Lightning's towing range that has been less than impressive. And then on TFL trucks, they had their electric Hummer brick out in the middle of a street and just go dead. And uh, lastly, we have the Rivian recall. And so they're recalling all 17,000 of the pickup trucks that have been sold because of steering slash linkage issues. I think it's important to understand why making these is so difficult. As I often do when I'm recording in my truck, I've got my state-of-the-art graphics package here. Although I have upgraded from a whiteboard to a, a notepad here. Why is making electric pickups so hard? Number one, pickups are a unicorn vehicle. Basically, when you buy a pickup, you want everything you can get with a car or an SUV, but then you want additional utility and you want dependability. So dependability is different than reliability because when I say dependability, I mean you wanna be able to use a pickup truck for its utilitarian reasons and have it be reliable under additional stress, under additional uh, payload requirements, under additional revving, under additional mileage, all these things. So essentially you want everything that you need. You want something you can commute to work in, you want something you can haul your family around in, and then you also want it to do all these different things that people buy a truck in order to do, and then you want it to be dependable. Now, dependability is especially important with pickup trucks because often we're doing things with trucks in dicey situations, off-road, out in the middle of nowhere. We're towing something on the interstate. It's one thing to break down the interstate. It's another thing to break down when you're towing a large load and you got to try and get over to the side of the road and get it onto the median without hurting yourself or anyone else. My point is that there's an extra demand for that reliability when you are using a truck for truck reasons. So what are the main utilitarian reasons people buy trucks? Basically, these are the big four. You're either wanting a truck because of the cargo carrying capacity. So think of car cargo as volume. Not so much weight, but volume. You need a big bed, maybe a big cab, but you want something that lets you carry a high volume of things or people, depending on what the case is. So number two, we're looking for payload. And payload and cargo are different because payload is about weight. You're also needing to make sure that if you need to pick up a pallet of bricks or a yard of topsoil or uh, whatever it is, you can put that in the bed of the truck and the truck will be able to carry it safely wherever you're going. So number three is towing. I think that's self-explanatory. And number four is off-road capability. Now, all of these four different things are kind of on a, you know, they're like adjusters. So some people might need something that's more off-road capable and they're less worried about, say, payload or towing. And vice versa, you might have somebody that's worried more about payload and towing and not as much about off-road. But the problem is, because of the audience, because of what people demand, every truck that's produced has to have some degree of enhanced capability in all four of those things. And then you can configure the vehicle either at the factory or aftermarket in order to enhance the capability of achieving those four things. And then of course, right in the middle, we need that dependability. So we need to be able to be off-roading and it'd be dependable. Have it under heavy payload and be dependable. Be able to tow big loads and have it be dependable. So basically, it's a unicorn vehicle. 
We're looking for something that is very unique when you're comparing it to essentially all other light vehicles that are sold. And we're not talking about medium duty or heavy duty vehicles. We're just talking about light duty. And that's basically kind of everything under, I think, two ton rating, like F650 rating. Problem number two, the pickup truck market is small. There's only something like 2 million pickup trucks sold a year annually, new pickup trucks. So the global light vehicle market is 75 to 80 million vehicles. And of that, pickup trucks represent 2 million, most of which is sold right here in the United States and North America, but most of that's in the United States. So what does that mean? That means limited investment, limited amount of research and development that can go into actually designing and building these vehicles. The other problem is you have low ability to have crossover parts. Because of the unique demands of the pickup truck, you can't use the same chassis parts. You can't use the same bolts. You can't use the same wheels. All of that stuff has to be upgraded in order to achieve the utility. Now, yes, there are some crossover vehicles that are built out there, but in general, when you're building a pickup truck, especially full-size pickup trucks, you can't use the R&D, you can't use the assembly lines, and you can't use the parts that you're using for all of your other cars and SUVs. So lastly, the other problem that is a really big issue when it comes to EV pickup trucks is weight. This is huge. So you have all these demands, towing and payload and off-road ability, they're all adversely affected by additional weight. You have a demand to do more with less from fewer competitors for a smaller market. The end result is that you don't have the collective bandwidth trying to solve truck problems that you do that are trying to solve other electric vehicle problems. I mean, right now, when you're talking about SUVs and sedans, every major auto manufacturer is putting a significant amount of their R&D into solving those issues, getting the costs down getting the batteries produced faster, making the design more efficient, squeezing more efficiency out of that battery pack, all of those things. And everyone is working on that problem. But then you have a relatively small number of people working on a relatively small number of vehicles to solve significant issues. You're asking the vehicle to do significantly more than you're asking a car or an SUV to do, but you're trying to do it with way less bandwidth, way less money, way less people, way less capital. That's why electric pickup trucks are going to be hard. It's going to be hard for people to solve those problems, and it's going to be hard for them to meet the demands of the pickup truck community. And this is one of the things that I've been saying about the Cybertruck. Why the Cybertruck has such advantages is that even though you have the history of pickup trucks in, in America by the big three that have done all of this production with pickup trucks and understand the market so well, they're trying to solve brand new problems. They're, they have a totally redesigned chassis. They have to totally redesign suspension systems. They have to absolutely re-engineer the trucks. Whereas Tesla has actually had the most experience with building vehicles that are using some of these features like heavier vehicles. They have the Model X using the adaptive air suspension on the Model X and the Model S. They have a head start. Sure, you have the pickup truck guys that might know more about the market they might know more about the pickup truck buyer, but Tesla knows much more about how to squeeze those resources in order to achieve the maximum results. That's why I continue to believe, despite the other manufacturers head start, the problems are getting out there. They're becoming more known. They're discovering that their ability to make trucks using the old model doesn't work for the new model. And now, Though in their rush to get things out, 
the blind spots are starting to pop up, whether it's software or whether it's lack of towing performance or whether it's lack of mechanical reliability. These things are all getting revealed. And I don't think there's a fast road to success for the other manufacturers. I think it's going to be a slog for them to get back to where they were with the ICE vehicles, where they achieve that unicorn balance. And I think the Cybertruck is going to get there a lot faster because of their experience and because they never tried to take an old design and upgrade it with new components. They started with a clean sheet and they started with something that was designed to solve the truck problems. Making electric pickup trucks is hard and Tesla has the lead on, on solving the unicorn vehicle issue while delivering on the durability promise. So that's it for today. Thanks for checking in and we'll catch you next time.